Hello, guys. Good afternoon, all my beautiful people. Ooh. Listening to Smile. We're in the feeling sacral. You feeling it? Can you hear me? I'm feeling it. It's been different out here, huh, guys? I went hiking in the cold yesterday. It's winter and I got my window open today. Hello, beautiful. Divine inspirations are coming in like a mug, right? So I had a divine inspiration to do this video. But when I do my videos, I always have to do like chores first, right? So before I was able to do my video, I had to clean my windows and clean out a couple little drawers and things like that. What are you guys doing for yourselves? What are you doing for yourself and, and the feelings that you're feeling? What are you doing with them? I've been feeling hella feelings. This whole Christmas break, Christmas time, New Year's time, New Year, new time. What are you feeling? Uh, there is some huge emotional healing. You know what's super funny? Is I have my amethyst and my citrine today. And that's exactly what I'm talking about is your third eye and your sacral chakra. And they're in a relationship, right? They're in a relationship, guys. Like... You have a holy relationship inside of you. You have this beautiful relationship inside of you that you need to embrace. The feelings are coming up, so you embrace this relationship inside of you. Um, guys, cry it out if you need to. I cried it out some, you know what I mean? I cry sometimes. Sometimes I cry by myself. Sometimes I talk to my friends and cry. Sometimes I watch a movie and cry. Sometimes I get a bath and cry. We're letting some old stuff out. Crying is releasing. So if you're crying, give thanks to be able to release. Releasing is not that easy, you know what I mean? If I wouldn't have got all the energy work and all that that I got, I would never be releasing like I release. Get Let yourself cry, let yourself sit with it. Can you speak about your emotions? Can you speak about the things that you're feeling? not my strong point that's not my strong point I'll admit it I can't can you who's good at speaking about the things that they feel it's good to see you too Robert cheers my friend I'm loving this time you know I'm loving to see people get to know their soul get to know the inspired desires that they have in their heart. Where does that inspired desire come from? When you get an inspired desire, that comes from your soul. And like most of the time you get this inspired desire, right? And then your human's like, no, you shouldn't think that or feel that or do that. That will never happen. That's the fight that's going on in this feeling space, right? It's all going on in your guts. So your gut's been hurting a little bit, head been hurting a little bit. I went to my wizard today, so I'm feeling myself. Went hiking yesterday, went to my wizard today. Yeah, I go to a wizard, so what you want? I do what I want. It was inspired by my heart's desire to go there today. Um, guys, do you realize how much our ancestors suffered to get us here where we are today? To get us to be able to talk about God on a live video. To get us these groups where everyone's talking about God and the soul. And getting to know your soul. And being linked up with all the particles and the fabric that makes the all. Do you understand what the people that came before us went through so we could do this right now? Like, give them thanks, man. They suffered real deep. For us to survive right now, right? Um, you know, when you when you go into your feelings and when you uh, some of the feelings that you feel, they're not even yours. You know, your feelings are directly linked with your intuition. Your intuition is directly linked with your ancestors. Your womb is directly linked with your ancestors, right? So, 
a lot of things that you're feeling and seeing and fearing and nervous about that's all the things that your ancestors were feeling and seeing and nervous about right if i know one thing in this world only love is real only love is real um you know is your day-to-day -day life real yes but are you choosing fear or are you choosing love are you going in to sit with yourself and your feelings and, and the things that come up and the and the fears that come to your mind when you're making moves? Like a lot of people are making some really big changes right now, right? And I cheer you on, I cheer you on. But when you're in the process of making a big change, it's really important to make that change from a vibration of love, from your vibration being in a state of love, right? And so, if your vibration isn't in a state of love and you're making a change and you have fears that are lingering around, right? Fears don't be like, hey, I'm here, I'm fear, I'm here. No, they don't do that, right? So fears just kind of like hang out in the background. So now you're trying to do this new thing and like these old tight fears are like coming up on you. And so the decisions that you're making, um, they have a lot of that fear energy with them. And so you know, a lot of people will say, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I got the same thing that I did before. Well, that's because you're still holding that fear, right? Um, so like, guys, your ancestors, your spirit guides, your family that passed, right? All of those people are you. Like, we're all connected. So like, if you have a boyfriend and he has another girlfriend and you're pissed, she's you. She's you, he's you. Those are fears playing out in front of your face, right? If you are up for a promotion at your job and somebody else gets it, guess what? That job, that person, that promotion, all of those things are you. All of those things are memories being reenacted from your ancestors in your life. Like it's like a movie, right? And I get it, like life is super real. And that's why I get on here to tell you guys these things and break them down for you like this, right? So feelings come and go, feelings come and go, feelings come and go, feelings come and go. But figuring out why you have the feelings that you feel in certain things is really cool and really important. You know, um, the past goes way beyond you. So like a lot of people that I talk to when we talk about their past, right? Um, I go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper because your past goes to like, you know, your ancestors. And, and we have an emotional memory of our ancestors, you know, just because of the way everything is, is together. The fabric of life, that is why we have our ancestors emotions inside of us right and you'll notice you know I've been studying families I, I do a lot of research I'm a nerd right so a lot of families have emotional themes right and so if you look back at your family and you look back at the emotional theme are they like highly emotional are they very shut off in their emotions do they do good with money, maybe not relationships, do good with relationships, maybe not with money, uh, you know, were, were they poverty, were they successful, you'll see a theme that lies in your family, and a lot of times, the fears that we have are their very fears, like, it's not even your fear, like, you might actually be strong in that thing that you're fearful of, but like this fear comes up, like, should I do it? It's like the dumbest thing sometimes too. Um, so look at your family, look at your family and the theme, the emotional theme in your family. You know, in my family, um, women are very shut down to emotions. Like when emotions come up, we just shut down. We're good. We're good. We're good. Right? So this whole emotional thing has been a really big thing for me to work out with myself because my family was never really good at talking about emotions. You know, we would just like not talk about it and we'd be good, right? But that's not healthy because as you talk about it together, as you can find words for your emotions, then people can understand. Does that mean that that person has to like care and like put your feelings like up on a pedestal? No. 
It doesn't work like that. Some people you'll meet, they'll be like, oh my gosh, like, I love you. I love your feelings. I can't believe you felt that way. But some people will be like, fuck you and your feelings. I don't really care. But us working on our feelings doesn't have anything to do with the response of others. Us working on our feelings is so the next time that the world spirals back around and gives us that thing, when that feeling comes up, we're going to be like, ah, nope, that's not mine. I know where that's coming from. That's some dusty old residue that my family has been hanging around for a long time. I'm going to grab this by the horns and I'm going to go. And I'm, I'm going to you know, be inspired by the things that I, I see. I'm going to feel them in my heart, feel them in my guts. I'm going to speak them from my mouth and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this thing that's different, right? Um, ask, you know, when you look back at your emotional themes of your family, ask about it. What can you do to use that emotional theme of your family to make your own dreams come true, right? Because I, I think that that's what, what's going on. I, I think that's what we get inspired by, right? Is like, you know, our ancestors had all these big things that they wanted to do. And that I think that's where these big things that we want to do, you know, as I look back into my family and I, as I learn about my family, my dad's side of my family, my mom's side about my family, um... A lot of the things that I have in me that I never really talked about or never really said anything were actually things that my family had going on in, in their life, right? And so see how can you, you, feelings are fuel, right? So either your feelings are going to wear you out or they're going to fire you up. There's no right or wrong way in this, right? So I just had some feelings play out for me and I let them wear me down. I come down here, I turn on the vibrations, I write, I feel, I live, right? So it's okay, there's no wrong way, right? Sometimes I write off my feelings and I'm like, woo! It's like the gasoline, rocket fuel to like charge me for the day. And sometimes I will be maybe stuck in my feelings, stuck in the duty for a little bit and that's okay too, right? Um. You know, one of my favorite things to do is to draw what makes me happy about my family. Because sometimes for me, um, you know, words are kind of hard for me. I, I don't really like words. I don't, I don't like a lot of words because, like, you'll say one word and, like, then you'll hear someone say that word in, like, a different way. And you're like, I just used that word and that's not what I was thinking about. And then you have this, like, energetic connection, like, with that word. So... I like to draw the things that make me happy about my family, whether it's my sisters and brothers, my mom and dad, me and the kids, me, you know, me and the man of my dreams. Um, you know, guys, when you go into your lineage, when you go into your inner child, when you go back into your feelings, right, into where those feelings come from, that doesn't have to be a terrible time. A lot of people that talk about inner child work and ancestral work and things like that, there's like this stigma right now that's going on that that is like a, um, a terrible thing, right? So like, you know, a lot of our grandparents have been murdered for, you know, trying to connect with their souls and, and things like that. And so that's a lot of the programming that we're like bringing up and getting out and stuff like that. But, um, you know, it doesn't have to be terrible. You know, sometimes the feelings are just, um, you know, not trusting or um, not being picked for the job or, you know, uh, being in competition or not being good enough, not being worthy enough. Sometimes it's, it's like the really littlest stuff. And like a lot of times when feelings come in, there's all this that comes in, right? Because they're fuel. And so when they come in or when they go out, they're like supercharged, right? And so... Um, you know, that's why it's good to like sit with them for a while before you say something. You know, I, I just had something recently come in and stir up my feelings and I said something right away and, and it's okay. There's no wrong way. Right. But then like fa I'm seeing faster. If I say something right away, faster, I'm coming back. Like, you know, I'm looking through that situation and like, really, that doesn't have to do with you. It was all about me. Guys, we're at a time right now in our lives where we must evolve. So that's the push that people are feeling. That's, you know, evolving is like getting to know your soul, like getting to know the God in you, like 
The God in you is a creator, is the creator of your experience. The God in you knows all about the fears, knows all about the feelings, knows all about the ancestors, knows all about the hurt, the pain, the trauma, right? But the God in you knows also about like the royalty to your lineage, the royalty of the connection of your soul to the all, to God, to, you know, that's the goodness of it, right? So, you know, I hear a lot of people that are like, I just don't want to deal with that. And I'm like, okay, word up. You don't have to deal with it. But you bet your ass that it'll wait for you to deal with it. Like, if you don't want to deal with it right now, you want to go play with your friends, you want to go, you know, whatever with your homies, go ahead and do all that, right? But the spiral of life is going to keep bringing this back to your life to say, like, you're going to have to evolve eventually from this thing, right? Or stay stuck in it, pass it to your kids, and then they'll work it out, right? Um... You know, a lot of people with this change going on are feeling like their life is in ruin. Like all these things that they were planning for, they were being so logical about all these things. And now, you know, this difference that comes in, this linking up with your soul, getting to know the God in you, all of these things, right? Now you feel like you wasted time or, you know, your creations that you were originally creating were ruined because now the things that you were creating don't really jive with your soul. Hi, soul sister. But guys, it's not, it's not in ruin to like just sit there and crumbles. It fell down. Things fell down and fell apart and fell away for you to rebuild yourself. It it wasn't like a, you know, all your bad, you know, I'm taking this away from you. It's like, okay, so if you see that that's not in line with your soul and what your soul wants to do, you got to figure out a way to rebuild that, how to clean that up, how to push that over there, push that over there and stay forward in you, right? It happens to everybody. So, you know, a lot of people think that not everybody goes through the things that they go through. Like everybody out here is aligning with their soul and their soul purpose. Everybody out here is figuring out about the God in them, right? Right? Um, you know, always think up this, all these videos, everything that I talk about, this is because of my, my thinking patterns have been changing, right? I know, I know, Jeff, I've been seeing it, like, just like go around. I love it. I love the fairies. I love the fairy. I've always been like this though since I was a kid and maybe that's why it's easy for me to come up here um and talk to you guys about these things because you know I always loved fairies I grew up in the woods and I you know I didn't have very many friends in the woods and so I would go into the woods and I would see fairies everywhere and those were my friends and we would play and you know we would do all these things and then I would tell my parents and they'd be like uh okay like I'm sure there's no fairies around here but I mean, if you want to, and you know, I'd be like, okay, whatever. Like, I'm not even digging on it. And that's kind of how I handle um, even people now with all of this stuff. You know, a lot of people are like trying to say how one gods or, you know, how someone does God or connects with God or feels at one with God. And to me, that's not my job. That's not where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be out here telling everyone that God is love and only love is real, right? And so however you get down with it, whatever. To me, God made the chakras, the energetic body. God made the fairies. God made love. <clears throat> God knows the bad things go on out here. But God is neutral. God is a, a neutral thing. You know, I have a lot of people say a lot of that kind of stuff to me. And I think that that's a big fear, right? That, that they're holding from their ancestors. Uh, and, and of course, like from a time where they were in a really low vibration. And if you talked about God, you had to either be like one way or not. And so I know whenever a lot of people come at me or, you know, post things about me and, and my belief with God, um, I know it's just their fear. And I send them so much love because, you know, being no getting to know your soul getting to know god the god particle in you how you are connected to god right that's your journey that's your special journey in 
Hello, love. Hello, Wendy. Hello, Dina. Um, so a lot of thinking patterns around God and the soul and soul work and feelings and inspired, you know, desires that touch your heart. We're changing old thinking patterns on a lot of different things at the very same time, right? So like the different out here is not just that I live in Pittsburgh and I open my windows in the winter, right? The different out here is that like, you'll go to like the dollar store and they're in there talking about God, their God, how they see God. You know, they're talking about God as love, not God as fear God, God as wow God, you know? A lot of the old ancestral programming was like fear God, fear God, fear God, fear God. But this different way, this new way is like, that's a power inside of you. Like the God power is the, is the superpower that is inside of you. And so like any kind of fear is going to knock you out of the alignment of you and your superpower. And like you have big shit to do here. So either you worry about what everyone's saying or you just stay connected to God in you and keep it moving. You and God have a love affair that is nobody's business. Yes. Uh, I love you, Wendy. Let me see. Oh, hold on. My sister got me this new thing of a jig. You and God have a love affair that is nobody's business. It is sacred into your heart and nobody can tear that apart lest it be sister girl from the fairy realm. Yeah, you do. You, you That is exactly like well, how I see it, Wendy. You know, like... And in our ancestors, they had that too. Like, even though they weren't allowed to like do live videos and do healing work and like offer up natural cures and like, you know, follow what they're, you know, imagine back to like the ancestors who, and still it happens today. Like the people who had to get married to like the people that their family picked. Like I love my family, but if they pick me a mate, I don't know. Like I probably would be like, mm, no. Um, but just imagine what they felt like about God, you know, like if God is real, then why do I have to marry this dipshit that my family picked for me? Right? So guys, we're changing old thinking patterns. So, you know, the old, the old way to like take a feeling when it comes up and shove it down in your guts, that's going away. We're taking feelings that come up and we're feeling them. We're seeing them, we're loving them, we're honoring them, we're cherishing them, we're smothering them in unconditional love. Unconditional love is God love, right? That's how we fix things in our lives. That's how we send, you know, prayer. Everyone talks about prayer. I send un unconditional love to people all over the world. If I'm just scrolling through Facebook and I see you're going through something bad, whether I say it or not, I send love. If I'm in my community and I see someone going through something bad, either I'll physically try to help or I'll just send unconditional love. Either way, that's covering it, right? Uh, that was a big part of growing in this God body for me is just knowing that it didn't have to be so physical, that it could be like energetic things that I could send, unconditional love that could help that person kind of like straighten out when they're feeling crazy, right? Um, we're releasing things that don't serve us. And so, you know, I hear a lot of people come at me about this God, God, blah, 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 right? And I'm like, yeah, like, you're going to really, I'm just going to give you some unconditional love because you're stuck in the old fear of God. I'm not fearful of God. I am that. So why would I be fearful of myself? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't think of God like that. I got to learn about healing. I got to manifest things. I got to see magic. I got to feel my feelings, right? So right now, a lot of people are like reclaiming their power. So that's the difference. So a lot of people were walking around here doing the things they had to do. And now that they're getting to know their soul, now that they're getting in touch with their power, now that they're getting in touch with love, unconditional love, things are really changing, right? And so that's a responsible thing to do is to reclaim you, get to know your soul, get to know where you came from, get to know about the feelings that come up that keep guiding your life or taking you onto the same pattern or taking you into the same thing, right? Um, your feelings and your intuition, they mean so much. They mean so much. 
They're like your internal, you know, everyone talks about guides. They're your guides. They guide you. Your feelings and your intuition is a guide. And the difference now is that people are maybe not following that and then getting there like, ah, I felt that. I knew that. There's no wrong way. It's okay. Spread the love. You know it, sis. You know it. Um, guys, the laws of attraction, you know, natural law has been like, I love natural law. Natural law has really helped me to understand God, like in, in what God really is. You know, when you think of God as just a man, you're like, uh, I'm not sure, right? There's a lot of people. We're all over the place. There's a lot of things, bad things, good things, right? How does this one person or deity or, you know, whatever do all this, right? And so then I started studying um, the natural laws. There's tons and tons, 13 natural laws or something. Start, look them up, look into them. But I really, laws of attraction was my first natural law that I dove into. And I was young. I was, I don't know, maybe like 19 or 20 or something. Um, but laws of attraction tells you that you, what you think is what you get. So like, the laws of attraction brings your dreams into fruit, your dreams into life, right? But one big, huge thing that I learned is like the alignment of your energetic body has everything to do with the fruit you bear from the laws of attraction. Hi, love. So if your energetic body is off and you have old fears that have been passed down time and time again, you've never taken time to visit those things. When you're out here and you're in creator mode and you're creating your life and you're attracting things to you that you're like, oh, like that doesn't go with what I was trying to do. Like, where did that come up? Like, what is that? Um... That is because you're out of alignment. So if you are manifesting things, if you're a creator, if you know you're a creator and you're manifesting things and they're a little skewed from what you were thinking, that is because you need to get your energetic body in alignment. You need to go into yourself. You need to feel into yourself. You need to honor all the feelings that are in here. And so each energetic space in you has different feelings, right? So like your root is security, your sacral is sexuality, your uh, solar plexus is your power, your heart is your love, your throat is your voice, your, your third eye is your intuition, your crown is your God, right? So imagine what goes on in those places. You know, you have seven really important places inside of you to get to know. And those seven places in you that I keep saying to get to know, that's your soul. That's what makes up your soul. Like, that's what made me be able to understand God because there's so many levels. I mean, those are just seven basics. It goes way, 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 way deeper. And then there's polarity and then there's meridians and then there's blocked meridians and then there's overflowing uh, chakra systems and then there's, you know, blocked off chakras. So as you go into you, start to do this research in your own family and how people process emotions in your family, you're going to start, your soul is going to help you to pull all this together. I know a lot of the things that I talk about seem like it's like so hard. I try to like hone it in like easy as I can for you guys because I love you guys. I've been looking into this, you know, for a long time. You know, and I learned about it different. My energetic, I cleared out my energetic body first. And then I was like, whoa, like, what is this? What, to come from a place like this, like old things that I knew that I was afraid of when they would come up and they would be like on the fly, I wouldn't be scared. And I would just like go do them. And I'd be like, what? I've always been scared of that. I don't know how that came up. Right. And then like old fears came up that I never had before. Like we used to jump off cliffs and jump into the water and stuff. And now I'm kind of like scared of heights. I don't know. It's really weird. And you never know that could come from like an old fear from my ancestors. This is what I'm saying to you guys, right? So positive thoughts are super dope, right? Positive thoughts have kept me going. Positive thoughts have 
pump me up in the morning. Positive thoughts I feed into my daughter and all the kids around me. Positive thoughts when my friends call me with something going on. You know, that's what our conversations normally consist of, right? But if your positive thoughts are fake, then you get what you get is fake. Oh my God, just noticed the shirt. I love it. I love you. I love you. That's my little sister. I, I love my little sisters. I, I'm telling you guys, man, I love my life. I, I really do. I love my life. I love my sisters. I love my connections. I love when my, I meditate. I love when I'm in a rough place in my life. I love when I'm in a good place in my life. Um, so the more that we get real with ourselves uh, and, and our attitude and our feelings, right? then the more life will get real for you, right? So the as you're creating, the more you get real with your feelings, the, and uh, it, the, then you're getting into alignment. So when you're getting real with your feelings, you're getting into alignment, right? That's why we do this, not to cry all over the floor, be snotting all over the place and telling everybody how much it hurt, 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 hurt. right now. We go into our feelings to feel our feelings, to get into alignment, to attract the things that we deserve in our lives. And so, you know, lack is in us. Abundance is everywhere, right? Abundance is all around you. you got pickings for days around you, right? But lack is inside of you. Lack has been passed down from our ancestors. Lack is in each one of those energy centers, right? And lack will come across as feelings, right? And so... When you when you're speaking, I, I say a lot of times we speak our lives into existence, right? And so, you know, I use this all the time. A lot of people will say to me, um, "I don't want no man." The girls, you know what I mean? The, the my girls, my honeys, and I'm like, yeah, "But you do." Like we we talked a hundred times about like you creating your partner, but then when you're in your feelings, right? I don't want no man. Last man I had ran up my phone bill and like whatever, right? So you're taking that fear. It came up. Something brought it up. Whether it was a smell or a sound or a person or what they look like or a song or whatever, right? And now all of a sudden you're talking about I don't want no man, right? You're lying. You're speaking out fake, right? So then you get this man. And he's everything you said you didn't want because that is really what you were talking about. Do you hear what I'm saying? So like, it's so important to go in, do the work, stay quiet, stay to yourself to feel out these feelings, right? Because we're constantly manifesting, whether we want to believe it or not, whether you think you do it or don't, everyone does this, right? So my advice to you is take some time with yourself, man. If you can't feel like you keep creating the same things, if, if, if different things are coming and you don't want the same results, go in, feel your feelings, see what they are, honor them. They're not all terrible. I promise you, right? I want a man. Yeah, for sure. Me too, girl. I, I just woke up today like, you know, I never wanted to just like, you know, fall in someone's arms and, and, you know, sit back and not have to take the wheel all the time. And this morning I was like, you know what? I mean, I'm always going to be a strong chick, right? But like, I do want that feeling of like, no, babe, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll reach up there. I'll get that thing. Let me take your car and get it gas. Let me heat it up for you. Uh, you know, I like those things. Let me rub your butt for a couple of minutes before you have to go to work. Make you smile. Let's talk about our dreams together. I want a man too, for sure. Um, we're approaching some big leaps up here. And that is why I'm really cheering you guys on to go inside of you, to feel your feelings, to feel what all that means for you. What time is it? Okay, we still have time. Um, so, you know, uh, there's a lot of shifting from regular life, right, onto your spiritual path. And like, your spiritual path does not have to be live videos, tarot cards, talking about energy, talking about soulmates, talking about all these things, right? It doesn't have to be like that. 
it, it, it's what's in your heart. It's how you honor your heart. You know, I have some big changes coming up in my life that, you know, I had been studying energy work for 13 years and now I'm about to go to nursing school. Can you imagine what I feel like right now? Does anybody out here give me some hearts if you can know what I feel like? Because I've done everything, Eastern medicine, energy, body for 13 years. And now I'm coming up on a huge change that's like, doctors, Western medicine, medicine, medical, right? And these fears are coming up. And that's how I can talk to you guys about this stuff. And so I'm sitting down with my feelings to see, you know, like I always had a fear of like doctors and medicine and all that. And I thought that it was like from my knee and, and everything that I went through. But I think it goes way back deeper and deeper than I can even realize. Oh my God, resonate. So instead of saying, I don't want a man, I should say, I want a man that is awakened. Yeah. And, and like, I want a man that is awakened. Like awakening can mean so many things, right? Awaken. When I think of an awakened man, I think of a man who keeps his body sacred, who keeps his space sacred. You know, that, that's what an awakened man to me means. That doesn't mean, you know, don't get lost in that stuff, guys. Don't don't get lost that, you know, just because they know about this or that, that they're awakened. See how they treat their temple. You know, if you're a god and your body is your temple, how do you treat your temple? How do you feed your temple? How do you manage the sexual energy in your temple? How do you keep your temple secure? How do you feel in your own temple? How does your temple feel? How does... Do you feel like you can do things in your temple? Like, do you respect your temple? Do you love your temple? Do you, like, in your temple, does it feel safe to love other people in your temple? Do you speak the things that you actually want from your temple, right? So an awakened man to me, an awakened woman to me is somebody that knows that they are God and they treat themselves in that manner. Now, a lot of us that know that we are God, we still have some glitches, right? We still have some things that we are still clearing out and working out. The, the journey is ever going, right? But if you want a man, yes, you say you want a man. And they're awakened. The word awakened goes so deep. So, you know, do you want a man that is peaceful? Do you want a man that is clean? Do you want a man that is honest? Do you want a man that is trustworthy? Do you want a man that can be your best friend? That you guys can have conversations and pick up like you never left off? Get deep about that stuff. You know, I'm the best deliberate creator alive because I'll take one thing and I'll get deep about it. Um, you know, I've been creating for a long time and just recently, you know, I have a hard time speaking my feelings when it comes to a man and intimate relationships. And so I've been working that out for the past four years and it's work. I know, right? That's perfect because they're doing Reiki now in hospitals. You get that. Yeah, they are doing Reiki in hospitals. You know, I was actually, um, in Tampa, I was working with some veterans and that was really awesome. But the direction that I want to go is women's health. Um, it, you know, there's a lot there for me. There's a lot of divine inspiration in my heart. And I know that I don't want to go into nursing school from a place of fear. And I do have some fears that I have to clean up in me um, that go around doctors and women's health and mental health and all of these things. But uh, my soul really wants to make a difference here on the planet. My soul really wants to bring love into that field. My soul really wants to make a giant impact in that field um, and learn way more than I knew ever before, right? And so, you know, I miss the classroom setting. I miss people asking questions. I miss debates. I miss writing papers. I miss learning new things that are silly or whatever, right? Then we need around seven men. <laughs> no, I believe that we can create that um, as an all in one, right? So that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. And I think that's why it's taking so much time is that, you know, I have this divine partner in my heart and in my mind and I can feel him and I can feel it, right? And, I, and when I'm by myself, I feel safe with it. I get into it, right? 
Um, but then, you know, as you're going out and you're meeting people and things are happening, it'll bring up a fear. And then you have to sit with that fear for a little bit and be like, okay. Like, and I take all the things that I like from the people that I've dated, right? And I leave all the things that I didn't like. And so that's how I create things. So, you know, no matter what, like in my work, I take all the things that I love. I leave all the things that I don't like. And that's how I'm creating this. That's how I'm creating this nursing career, right? I can see you as an MP. Yeah. So um, that's what I want to do. I want to be an MP um, focused on women's health. That's that's where I'm at, guys. And so it seems like a silly thing to have fear in, but it's real for me. And I, and I give it to you guys really real. You know, I have been working for myself. I have been the creator of my own experience, you know, from the morning to the night, I do what I want. Now, through nursing school and through all these things, I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm going to kind of be on someone else's time. And so that's a really big fear for me, right? And so it's like the littlest things. You 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 never would think it until you sit there and get to talking to somebody about, you know, what kind of fears come up. And that's why I say they don't always have to be like these terrible, terrible things that come up. Like they can be really silly, stupid. Like, like are you fucking kidding me? Just go. Pack a lunch. Go meet some friends. Shut up, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. First time here. Much love. Hello, Natalie. Much love. Um, so, you know, guys, we got to honor ourselves. You know, we got to honor our living body. We got to honor our temples. We got to know that we are worthy of life, worthy of a good life. You know what, Cindy? Um, that we are worry, worthy of divine realization. So I know a lot of people are out here like, I can't connect with my guides. I keep trying to meet these guides. I don't know what you guys are talking about about your guides. You're not feeling worthy of divine realization because it doesn't matter who the guide is. The guide is you. The guide is your ancestor. The guide is you. The ancestor is you. All of God is you. All of that is you. And so when you don't feel like you're worthy of divine realizing, then you don't receive it. It's kind of just like this blank, like, what do you mean? Like, you ask what, and you get what? Because you don't think you're worthy of that. That's something that you're carrying down from your ancestors. You should see the rays coming at you from your window. I love you. Before I did this video, I had to clean all my windows, and so, you know, I got them open and got them, like, airing out. I have to do things before I do these videos for you. That's, that's how my God body works. I can see from my phone. I love it. Um, and like I said, guys, this spiritual journey may not look like what you expected. An awakened man may not look like what you expected. Like when, when you're thinking these things, when you're joining these groups, when you're doing all, everybody thinks that it's supposed to look this certain way. Everybody thinks I'm supposed to talk this certain way or be this certain way or live this certain way. Um, it, it's not like you expected. I never expected to get 13 years into my journey and go Western medicine. I never did. If you would have asked me five years ago, eight years ago, I'd have been like, fuck them. I'm never doing that, right? And here I'm like, oh, man, I can't wait to go to school. I can't wait to learn more. I can't wait to sponge it all in. I can't wait to have my own practice. I can't wait to go to school for 10 years. <laughs> Guys, we got to let go. We got to let go of all the things that we thought it was supposed to look like. The way that we thought that God and spirituality and all these things were supposed to be, right? Know what's good for your temple. Know what's bad for your temple. Respect your temple. Respect your God body. Respect yourself. Respect yourself with the people that you're around. The people that you let around you. The, the, the time and the energy that you put into whatever it is that you're doing, right? respect yourself um embrace your path you have special work to do you know who cares about what other people think about you see i'm way way past what other people think about me and i know there's still some people who care about what other people think about them or you know they hold this family dynamic and they need the the people in their family to see them in that way right and a lot of people are breaking that down and so as you go into your feelings and you honor all that, then those are the things that fly away, and then you can embrace your path better. Um, 
you know, I want you guys to think of your ancestors as royal heritage, right? So a lot of people think back to their ancestors and they think of the fear and the lack and the poverty and the hurt and the pain and the all the terrible things that everybody went through. I don't want you to think like that. I want you to think back like, man, my ancestors were royal. And and the the DNA that they passed down to me is royal god body shit right and i gotta live like that i gotta live and make them proud of me of who i am right now is the time to live this the way you want to live this in your unique expression of god particle whatever you want to do i carry around some citrine sometimes i wear tree shirts i drink coffee i say fuck there is no one way right i mean i would even be talking to god like what the fuck God knows. God knows better than all the people out here. Trust and believe that. Um, a lot of people are searching outside of their hearts to try to understand all of this. And that's about to end. Um, so if you have people in your life, you've been doing some inside work. They're not knowing how to get inside. Even all these people that do videos and talk about it and everything, they still can't figure out. They keep looking outside. That is all about to end. And so I think conversations are going to get a lot better. I think that healing is really going to start happen more rapidly. Um, searching outside of you for fulfillment is about to be over. It's all inside of you. Um, guys, we're stepping into empowerment in a new way. And we need to honor it. We need to honor the power that was with is within us. Fuck yeah, right? Um, hey, love, I love you, girl. I'm sending you so much love. So, you know, I was having a conversation with some guy that I, I don't know, and we were talking about, he was talking about how scary it is to find the power in you. Hey, love. And, you know, I could totally relate to that. Like, when I first learned energy work, I was afraid of it. Like, I was really fearful of, like, hurting anyone or, like, bumping anyone off track or getting in anyone's way, you know. And and a lot of times it's easier to fall into the fears. It's easier to fall into the, I can't have that. I can't be that great. It can't be that great. It can't be that great. I just got to have this regular life. I just got to plug away at this. But my heart's desire in this. But you know what? I'm just going to keep it real. I'm just going to do these real things. And I said to him that I think that, like, I see a lot of people on here, whether you do videos or don't do videos or <clears throat> work at the movie store or work at the grocery store or work in massage or whatever you're doing, I see a lot of people becoming empowered. I see a lot of people wanting to know how to get inside their cells, situations coming up that's kicking up fear and they're wanting to know. And so people, by people being empowered, and talking about empowerment and coming out here and living their lives and sharing their experiences with you, you never know who that's empowering that you don't get to hear about. You know, I get messages sometimes years later from my videos and say, oh my gosh, and I believe I watched this video about something and it empowered me to make this shift in my life. And you know, I just give thanks. I just keep it super simple. I don't let myself get a big head or float up on my high horse, right? <coughs> Because that's what's happening. As people are getting inside of them and getting to know them, they're getting empowered. And when people have these divine inspirations and they want to go do these crazy things, sometimes like all they want to hear is like, go ahead, do it. There's no wrong way, right? Um, right now is a time to really cut out the drama. Cut out the power games, trying to prove that you're love, trying to prove that you're the truth, trying to, you know, fit in with people that are causing a bunch of chaos. You know, your soul, I tell you guys all the time, is just wanting joy, happiness, and peace. You know, this your soul already knows you're the best you. You know, your soul already knows what you got to clear out. Your soul already knows when that person's trying to play a power game with you. Don't even pay it no mind. I saw a lot of people around New Year saying that, that they were going to do that. And I really do send out so much love. And I hope that you honor that in you because 
it's not time for that. Right now it's time to build you, to build your God body, to get to know your soul, your God body, to do soul work on yourself, not worry about anybody else. You know, you're worth so much more than drama and power games. You're so you're worth so much more than what anyone out here thinks of you. Because nine times out of ten, if somebody has time to have an ill thought on you or your idea or your path, they're not taking enough time to go into their selves. Because I'm telling you guys right now, I'm a creator and I don't have time to think ill on you. I don't even have time to think ill about the people that do me dirty. I just have to shield up my protection a little bit harder and keep it moving, right? Um, <sighs> some people are going to respond with love to your inspired desires, right? Some people are going to reply with fear to your inspired desires. That's why I think a lot of people around this time and like coming into this time have kept a lot of their ideas to themselves because, you know, God is cheering you on soul is cheering you on like it's a party going on inside of my body right and a lot of times when I would bring that excitement to someone else their fear would come back at me and tell me that I couldn't do that or I shouldn't try that or you know from where I came from I can't be that or being who I am and where I'm from I can't get that far or whatever and that is like that'll leave you in the doo-doo man you don't want that you don't want that. You want to tell, you no. Know, and, and some people aren't strong enough to say, I don't care what you think. I'm still going to do it anyways. If I mess up, whatever. Guys, I moved down south like 15 times and I just moved back home. Who cares? There's no wrong way. We need to embrace these changes that are happening. We need to embrace getting intimate with our soul getting intimate with our God body. We need to embrace that we are a God body. We need to embrace that maybe sometimes you weren't taking care of your temple that good. Maybe sometimes you weren't loving on your temple enough, right? Maybe sometimes you were getting caught up in the drama and the power games instead of following forward on your heart's desires. And that's okay. Embrace the changes that are coming in. You know, like I have my windows open because it's sunny and warm here, right? I was hot in my house. I'm cleaning my house. I'm like sweating. I'm like, you know what? I need to like open the windows, let some air circulate around here. I payload and sage the whole spot, get it to go out the windows, right? Embrace the changes. Know that the changes that are happening, even though they can be very uncomfortable for you, are for your best interest. They're for the interest of your soul, of your God body, of you and your God body getting to work together, right? And, and share that out loud however you find that. Have compassion for those in fear. There are so many people out here that won't take time to fit, sit with their fear. They keep running, they keep looking outside, they keep trying to think logical, right? And so they have these fears. And a lot of times when the fears come up against you, it's like a boxing match, right? It's not just like, oh, here, I'm scared of this, right? No, it's like, no, ah, shit, right? That's how it comes in. But I want you guys to step back from them, get out of that space, clear out your space, put up your protection, right? And have real compassion for them because the compassion in me is what helps me to send unconditional love to the people that hurt me, the people that think bad about me, the people that talk bad about me, the people that say bad things to me. You know, I'm the first one to get up on a live video and be like, I am not perfect, but fuck I'm trying in the name of love, right? I go in on myself in the name of love. I'm trying to learn. I say, I'm sorry. I say my thank yous. I try, I go in, I go in, I go in, I go in. But, you know, we by having compassion, we can see through what's projecting at us, right? Because the fears will come at you. Like, you know, I told you, fears are like rocket fuel, right? But when you keep yourself protected, when you up your protection on yourself, on your God body, you're able to see through that fear and see like, damn, man, because normally when a fear has, when someone has a fear that's like that, that attacks at you, that's deep. That's a deep fear. They need love. They don't know they need love. They think that they're safe. They need love because they're creating that in their lives. They keep creating that in your their lives. And if they came into to your life 
and they gave you that fear, that's your job to transmute that fear. That's what we're here to do. Let me see. What advice or guidance do you have to give someone who is getting inner guide to start doing something, but their fear is holding them back of, like you said, um, you know, I'm a vibrational alignment coach. Everything I do is always, I always go back to the vibrations, right? So if you're having this inner inspiration, right? And then the fear starts coming up. I just told you about my schooling, right? That That's so real, right? And it keeps coming up. And like, this is my dream. This is my goal. I wrote it down. This is what I want. And the fear, fear still come up. And so one of my favorite vibrations is the 528 hertz. You can look on YouTube. You can turn it on. It's free. It runs for nine hours. I work with listening to smile.com. You can also go there, purchase some CDs from him. Ian is amazing. But what you want to do is if you don't, if you go to YouTube, you want to listen to a solfego tone because it's a pure tone, 528 hertz. So what the 528 hertz is, is it's in the solar plexus. And a lot of us have a lot of walls up around our heart. And that's why it's hard for us to get to know our soul. That's why the getting to know your soul part is like getting to know a stranger. Because these walls that have kept us protected from the fears that we've passed down, that we've carried down, that we've created for ourselves, right? So the 528 will kind of like beat up against that heart space and kind of get you to like drop down some of those fears, right? And so I use a lot of affirmations. I use a lot of thank yous. And, and you want to get into that fear and say like, okay, what does this fear bring up for me? Like, what does this fear mean to me? Like the fear wasn't there to stop you. The fear was there for you to go through it, to feel through and past it. Because I'm telling you, like on this side of the fear, you're like, ah, shit, my armpits are sweating. I'm freaking out. Right. And then like you feel the fear and then you like, get past it. And you're like, oh, shit, it wasn't even that bad. Hi, Sarah. My son, Philip, says hi and stop swearing. LOL, just kidding. But he did say hi. Hello, Philip. Yeah, this, this, I'm not normally for your kids. I mean, I love you. I love you, Philip. Adults don't really get it, Philip. So sometimes you have to cuss a little bit to get their attention. Yes, always improving yourself. That's what it is. Oh, the 528. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Let's turn a little bit of that on. I think this is Evan. 528. That's why I love listening to Smile. Cause like it turns the the vibration like into a song for me. And I really like that. Yes, Ella. He did say that. Adults don't listen, Philip. They're stuck in fear. I love you too. I'm just pulling everybody out of fear, Philip. And then we're gonna have heaven on earth when they're ready, right? Um, so guys, the essence, it's, it's the essence. Every desire has an essence with it, right? So it's not just like this, like wish list. It's not just like for nothing, right? There's an essence. There's a feeling has an essence. People have an essence. You know, like my divine partner has an essence. So I know that when I meet him, I'm knowing it, right? And I've seen pieces of him in many people that I met and I give thanks, right? And there's an essence. There's so many things that I put into my career and what my soul sees for my career, my divine partner and what my soul sees for my divine partner, my foundation and how my soul helped me set up my foundation. You know, my soul helps me do all this stuff, set up my foundations, navigate through the world, make decisions, feel firm in myself. Like that isn't people doing that. That is my soul. That is my team, my divine team, me, the God in me. Like there's so much more to you than Becky or Aaron or Donna. Thanks a hundred. I appreciate it. I love you, girl. I try to help wherever I can. Um, and the essence of every single one of your desires can be fulfilled. They didn't come from nowhere. So if you give up on your desire, that's you giving up on your desire. I'm not a quitter. I might fuck up 
I might do a lot of things wrong out here, but I am not a quitter. I am not a quitter. When I was laying down and couldn't walk, I'm writing my book, right? And there was a long time in my life where I couldn't walk, right? My body was like riddled with pain and I wasn't fucking giving up. I was like, oh no, there is another option out here. And everyone's looking at me like, what? I'm like, I don't know. It's coming. I keep feeling that there's another option out here and Yins ain't telling me shit. And they're like, okay. Like five people told you you need a knee replacement. I'm like, there's another option out here. Everyone's like, what? I don't know. Guess what? I found it. It found me. I found it or it found me because I believed in it. The doctors told me I was wrong. My parents listened to the doctors and then they co-signed them motherfuckers. Everybody was telling me I was wrong. Look at you. You can't get up. You can't barely work. You have all this pain. You're isolating. You're gaining all this weight. Your skin looks terrible. And I'm like, yeah, but there's something else. Like if I just get my knee replaced, it's still going to hurt. I'm still going to feel like this, right? I didn't know anything at the time about the energetic body, cleaning out the energetic body. I didn't, I, if you would have asked me when I was 20 years old, what I felt like I would feel like about to be 40, I would be like, I will want to die when I'm 40. But like at 36, I feel younger, lighter, more excited, more adventurous than I felt when I was 15. I would have never known that. My heart kept telling me it's going to get better from here. You know, I, I kept knowing that there was something else out there, even though I've never seen it before. And I believed 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 until I found it. If I would have listened to all those people that told me I was wrong, could you imagine? They would have chopped up my leg like a chop shop. I would have had, uh, I would have had a knee replacement at 23, 33, 43, 53, 63. And now I don't have any pain. I never had a knee replacement, no pain. Cause I believed in my heart that there was a different option, even though I couldn't see it. Even though I couldn't Google it. I knew it was out there. No, everyone told me I was fucking crazy. I'll be crazy if it's that, right? So you have a dis you have an inspired desire within you and it's ever changing, right? So when my knee was hurt, my inspired desire was to feel better. <laughs> yeah, that is amazing. Um, and now my inspired desire is to uh, you know, become a woman's health practitioner, right? And they're also your inspired desires are going to always change, but you'll see over the time, right? That they're they're very similar and they're they're linked to one another and everything's connected to the fabric of God, right? You are a God body. Everything that you are inspired to desire is connected to this all, right? Only love is real. If you feel like you can have it. And then you get an alignment with your desire, like feeling what it would feel like to have it. Then that's how you get there. You don't have to really necessarily worry about mapping the whole way there. You know, I could have never guessed that I would have met my healer and, and he would have done these things for me, right? I just knew healing was available. I would think in my mind, what would it feel like to be healed? Oh my gosh, I would go work out. I'd wear high heels. I'd get sexy sometimes. I'd get me a little boyfriend. I'd do all these things, right? And they could be stupid things, right? It doesn't even fucking matter. Um, so, you know, all right. So a lot of people say, how do I know if I am in alignment with my desire? All right, so joy, happiness, peace, alignment, right? Joy inside, happiness inside, peace inside. That's alignment, right? If you're feeling like you're in competition, if you're feeling a lack, a fear, a shortage, limitation of resources, that is not alignment. You know, <laughs> God is magic. God is like the magical provider. You don't you don't have to be in competition with everyone. There's enough for everyone. There, you, there's no shortage of anything. There's enough for everyone. There is no, fear is an illusion. They're, they're pumping and blasting everyone with fear. It's up to you to let yourself 
watch that, eat it, absorb it, feel it, roll around in it, right? There's no limitation of resources. The possibilities are endless. And a lot of times people plan their lives and they're mapping these things out and they're getting down to the get down and they're doing all these things. And it was really a lot easier than what they thought and they're human. God makes it easy. Um, so if you're out of alignment, then it's hard to get the inspired desires. If you're out of alignment, then it's hard to just manifest the things that you want. So if you're in a bad mood, if you're feeling competition, shortage, limitation, fear, all these things, go in, go in, feel in, feel, get in alignment and then start to create your life. That's what you want to do. Because if not, if you're doing it from a place of competition, shortage, fear, limitation of resources, that is the fake that you're going to get back. Giving some feeling love out to everyone. It's okay to feel, guys. It's not as bad as you think. I'm not really good yet at communicating my feelings. I'm getting better. Um, but I do do a lot of work with my feelings. When feelings come up, I take my time to sit with my feelings before I react, before I give it to anyone, before I do anything, before I, you know, I'm getting better. It's a process. There's no wrong way. I love you guys because we're all connected. I gotta go pick my baby up. We had a hard time today. Today was our first day back to school um, from, you know, Christmas break. And man, I was having separation anxiety. She was having separation anxiety. I was about to cry at the school. I have a fear of people not being happy with a reading and fear of if I don't get better at it, but lately I've been really strong feeling to put myself out there as a beginner and do it for donations in neighborhood and build my confidence in it and practice makes perfect yeah i mean that's super dope donna um i don't really i mean i everyone has things that they're drawn to um that's how i felt about energy work at first like fear that they wouldn't be happy fear that i might hurt them um go in every fear you have everything that's out of everything that doesn't feel like joy happiness and peace go in and figure out what that is for you you know, because joy, happiness, peace, serenity, like all those good things, that's soul. Anything outside of that is the illusion. So just feel that, feel what it brings up for you. I'm cheering you on. Go out and do it. You know, uh, I never thought that I would have a career in energy work. I never thought I'd be doing uh, retreats and speaking events and, and coming on here and doing this stuff in my community and then going to school for Western medicine. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. I'm cheering you on, Donna. I love to see people like follow their heart's desires. I'm so shy of going live. <laughs> yeah. My armpits still sweat. You don't believe me. <laughs> I think that's why I have to clean first. I think I have to clean first before I do my live videos because it like mentally prepares my soul for you guys i've tried before to not clean before i came on and like i felt so scatterbrained in here and like people were coming in they were like get me off track i feel like when i clean up I'm, like anchoring my soul to the ground i feel grounded um <laughs> a fearful, i'll be honest yeah, it, it is a fear, you know, and, and in my group, in my coaching, I tell everybody like, it's a private group. It's a secret group. Come on here and go live because I think a lot of people can work things out on a live video. I worked a lot of stuff out. My live videos are just for me. If you guys didn't know that, um, every message that I give is something that I'm going through. Every single one, every single one, I tell you something real about me. Uh, you know, and as real as I can be, when it comes to like intimacy and relationships, I close off in my feelings. I can come on here and talk to your grandma about sex, but I can't tell my man about how my heart feels sometimes. I don't know. I love you guys because we're all connected. I want to see everybody living in connection with their soul, their purpose, treating their bodies divine you know, loving themselves, like how God loves, not holding themselves up to a thing and getting down on themselves. You know, I want, you know, what are the two roles, right? Love yourself, love your neighbor. I'm here for that. That's what I'm all about. I'm cheering that shit on out here in the name of love. 
Oh, that's a fantastic idea. I don't even know what I said, girl. All right, I'm getting off here. I gotta go get my baby. I love you so much because we're all connected. Please, please, please go in. Go in with your fears. Sit with your fears. Ask your soul for help. You know, it's you and you in there. It's you and you in there. It's not gonna come down with wings. It's you and you in there. I mean, maybe one day you'll advance that. You'll see all that shit, right? I don't know. Or maybe you used to see it and you shut it off. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But like greatness is out here for everyone. And if you're not feeling great, go in, feel. Why don't you feel great? Try to figure out why don't you feel great? Nobody outside of you can do this for you, just you. Turn on the vibrations, 528 hertz. Put it on, pump it in, write it out. I love you guys. One love.